So we're heading off on a massive trip. We're in Perth right now and we're gonna end up way up in Cairns on the east coast. This trip we're going straight across the middle of Australia and we'll be looking for a lot of different species, some of them dangerous, but by far the most dangerous thing in Australia is what we're doing right now. We're driving through heavy traffic Many lizards are seen basking on the side of the road in the early morning sun, like this western bearded dragon we pass by. We then go check out an old ghost town named Kukini. We're at the Grand Hotel, built around 1902, where we meet an ex-pace horse named Willie, who was adopted by the town when he wandered in out of nowhere. find some reptiles under there. There should be a few around. Uh, I know there's a gecko under this one. Well, look. Cute little barking gecko. Underwoodosaurus milii. Underneath this bit of tin we got some binos geckos. Probably the most common species out in the desert here. There's a couple. Oh, one, two, three, four barking geckos. Oh, wow. I've found a bunch of barking geckos. All original tails. Where? Oh, there's mother and bubs. There's mama. And the bubs are all running about. So when you're out in the bush, and particularly these older areas, a lot of the time they put in pipes like this. It's actually an old well. And um, we'll just drop a rock in to see how deep it is and if there's any water. Oh yeah, yep, there's water, but it's a long way down. So if you get a long rope and a cup, you can get yourself some water out of there. Our next ghost town stop is Gualia. It was a mine site built in 1890 and ended in 1963. It resides near the town of Leonora. My Italian ancestors once lived here, so Steve and I go check the place out to see how life was like back in the old days. Hell yeah, do you want to get some super plume ethyl Kyle? That's my favourite sort of ethyl. It's an antique stuff here. 1900. Axe is still even open and closed by itself. Ah! <laughs> you want to get some coronation curls, Carl? No. <laughs> As the sun starts setting, it's time to go herping. There are many nighttime herping segments on this film. And this looks like ideal habitat. Just found this uh, blind snake out here. There's lots of species of blind snake in Australia. I'm not too sure what this one is. They're quite secretive snakes, to be honest. Big Ted. Looks like a giant worm, but he's actually a snake. He's got that forked tongue. But that's the thing about blind snakes is that so many species and quite a few undiscovered still in Australia. So this one's probably a common species I reckon. Yeah, just cruising about the roads out here in Laverton. Yeah. Smells fantastic. It smells horrible. Let's let him go. Just 
idea. Let you go, buddy. Go find some termites or something to eat. All right, well, this is a mean snake. Um, he is a member of the Elapidae family, but he's not particularly harmful. Um, we'll just move him off the road. They're quite a common species. I'm sure we'll find plenty more. Look at that. He's a bit fiery. Beautiful, uh, beautiful snake. Member of the Furina genus. All right. That's a good uh, predator avoidance um, thingy. It looks a lot uh, more dangerous than he actually is. Got another snake on the road here. This is a rosens, part of the pseudo genus. It's um, an elapid. It's mildly venomous. You certainly uh, would steer away from getting a bite from this one if you could, but um, we'll move him off the road up nonetheless. I wonder if that's a gravid female. It looks quite thick set, so it might might be a gravid female warming up, warming up her young. Related to uh, the curl snake over east. Closely related. He's uh, quite common in the desert. We'll move him back off the road here. Easily mistaken for a Stimson's python. The only way I could tell it was a Rosens at first was those scales. All right, we'll just let this guy go. Try and find some more snakes. It's Trophurus Wellington Eye. We love these guys. I haven't seen one of these in ages. There's his spiny tail. He's got little eyebrow spines too. What you doing, Carl? Uh, this ant might be of the honey ant, maybe. Cool. Strophurus heard ya. Strophurus don't care. <laughs> Spiny tail kickahoo. Alright. Wanna let him go? Yep. Come on, buddy. Stephen's just grabbing his camera, we just spotted a thorny devil on the road. Haven't seen one in a while. Back shortly. Yes! What an awesome creature. Just warming up on the road. Might even be a gravid female. By far the reddest form I've seen. I've never found one quite so inland. They're all throughout Central Australia, but I've only seen um, them on the coasts of WA before. Quite prickly, believe it or not. Now they mostly eat ants. So a lot of people think they make a good pet, but um, they don't. They look really nice, but um, Take a photo like I'm about to do and just move them off the road and let them be on their way. Guada, also known as Western Brown Pseudonaja Mengdenai. Beautiful one with a black head. And we'll just escort him off the road so he doesn't get a hit. It's our first snake out in Central Australia and it's one of my favourites. These guys are pretty shy. If you tend to go near them, they really want to go the other way. And if you really get in their way, they will go up in that S-shaped position. This one's really pretty. They come in all colours. This one's uh, a colour we've wanted to find for a long time. The one with the black head and the nice, beautiful uh, desert orange on him. He's a bit grumpy, this one. Although he hasn't tried biting, he's doing a lot of hissing, which is what a lot of brown snakes do. It's part of their behaviour. Yeah. 
He used to be known as uh, Sudanaja Nucalis, which was the Western Brown and the Northern Brown were all grouped together as one. But now uh, they've separated the Northern Brown and the Western Brown. So this is now Sudanaja Mengdeni. He's a close relative of the Jugite, which is found in Perth or the Peninsula Brown in South Australia, and the Eastern Brown, the famous Eastern Brown. So he's just crawled into this spinifex. Ooh, leave him be, it's getting way too hot out here. Into a mouse hole. Fantastic. These skinks are a lot faster than they Yeah, in the desert, the reptiles warm up a lot quicker. So they have a lot more energy. This guy's got a bit of an injury on his tail. Not that pretty in terms of Centralian blue tongue standards, but uh, he's really fat and healthy. These guys have to be one of my favourite lizards. And they just walk through that spin effects like it's nothing. And oh, they yeah. poke out their tongue a lot, these ones. Yeah, that's the defence mechanism. Not too many cars on this road, but we'll move them off the road anyway, you never know. So it's still midday, it's really hot, but the reptiles are still active. So I'll just let this guy go and uh, just watch how he cuts through this uh, really sharp, sharp bush. He'll just run straight through it like it's nothing. We'll see a lot of these on our trip. Maybe them off the road. Beautiful yellow. I don't move them too far off the road because uh, their home's probably nearby. Got a goods monitor. Or sand goanna as they're also known. These ones are really pretty here. Wow, look at the colours on this one. That was a stunning animal. Look at that, look at the pattern on his back. It's like a painting. Yeah, actually it does look like an Aboriginal dot painting. These guys, if you get too close they can run like blazers. And he's sitting right next to a road, so we might just encourage him to run off for us. Do you want to see how quick he can move? They call them racehorse goannas in parts of WA. The other name is Bungara. Probably the most common varanid in all of Australia. And this is by far the prettiest form. Alright Kyle, if you want to just um, encourage him to move off. Won't take much, watch this. And there is no way you could outrun that. You're actually going to eat it? Yeah. What we've got here is some bush bananas. They're a uh, type of vine, a parasitic vine that lives out in the desert. And you often find them interwoven in trees like this and whatnot. And they produce this fruit. And you can just ch chuck it on the coals if you want, but uh, we like to keep some of the uh, soot out of our food. So we wrap them up in our foil. And they taste just like green peas. And this is what they look like when they're cooked. They should pop open along the seam there. That's it there and you eat this. You can eat these bits here. And you can eat the flesh as well. The flesh, in my opinion, is far more tasty, this bit here. This is some kind of beak gecko. I'm not sure what species it is off the top of my head. We've never seen it before though. It's absolutely beautiful. Little thing, but very pretty. Another thing that looks a bit like a dot painting. Beautiful morning out here in the desert. And we're waking up to find these dingo tracks going right through our camp. Now over the tire track we made last night, so um, 
We've had a dingo come in to camp while we're sleeping, but we didn't see it. Hopefully we find one soon. Okay, we have a Central Australia roadblock here. Wow, look at the babies. It's amazing the different colours they have. What do you think of the camel's car? Camelie. Another night, another herp. Alright, just sitting out on the road just at dusk. This is a Stimson's python. A close relative of the children's python and the spotted python. It's the Anteresa genus. I once had a pet Stimson's python for 10 years. My younger cousin, Steve's brother, now owns him and has had him for about six years. When I got the snake named Bart, he was about four years old. He is still alive today, making him over 20 years old. Snakes can live a long time, and I still visit the snake every now and then. All right, off he goes. So there's heaps of new geckos just, uh, described in Australia. Um, the fat tail gecko is a recent one uh, that's been separated to a few groups. Uh, I think this is a Centralian fat-tailed gecko. What does he use the tail for? So he uses that tail to um, block spider burrows, where they, that's where they live in. And it's to block it so no predators attack them while they sleep during the day. Cute little gecko. It's a species of ground gecko. They don't climb like the typical ones around your house do. As Stephen says, they are a ground gecko, but um, they're known to eat uh, a lot of termites, so they probably can climb some termite mounds pretty well. This guy's a good climber. Let's we'll take him off the road. Hopefully we see our knobtail gecko. So Steve just spotted this knobtail on the road. Now this is a species we haven't found before. We found knobtail geckos, but uh, this is the inland type. But this is a gecko with uh, wanted to find on the trip, we've been talking about it a lot. Now these guys are well known to, oh, he's going to my boot. These guys are well known to eat geckos, other geckos. Oh, he's quick. We'll just let him be on his way. Another knobby, that's beautiful, big knobby. What fantastic creatures of the desert they are. Just leave him off the road. We've got a beautiful banded guarda here. And he's in a bit of a mood out basking this morning. Because he's cold, he's standing his ground a fair bit more. He can't race off. You often notice when snakes are a bit cool in the morning and basking, they're more likely to stand their ground. Look how glossy he is in that sun. They come in all kinds of colours. Now, surprisingly, the bandon form is actually fairly common. And uh, it's probably one of my favourite colour forms of the guadas, also known as the Western Brown. He's got a tiny little head, but he still has little venom glands in there. Still a fairly young snake, I reckon. They don't get very big. As they get older, they start to lose their colours a bit. If I'm really slow and I keep my distance, I'm fairly safe. Sorry, I'm just amazed how pretty this guy is. Now as it warms up, he's going to move a lot faster. Reptiles are cold-blooded, so they need that sun to warm them up. Now it's really sunny today, so it doesn't take much to warm them up. 
and these snakes are one of the fastest snakes in the desert. But as you can see, it's not having a go at Kyle. It's giving him a bit of a warning, but it's keeping its distance. If you stand too still, you'll think you're a tree. See, I stood really still there, and he didn't have a go at my feet. The snakes don't chase people. You shouldn't really have any problems. You're very unlucky if you tread on one. It happens pretty rarely. They only have a bite in defense, never out of aggression. This is the other species of blue tongue. This is a western blue tongue. Taliqua occipitipodalis. The funny thing is, is we found a centralian blue tongue not too far away from here. Taliqua occipitalis, that's it. Got it. He's curious. He's working out what the camera is. What's going on? We're actually well and truly in Centralian Blue Tongue range. We're not too far from the WANT South Australia border. See, they've got quite different patterning. Got a netter dragon here having a sunbake. Heaps of these guys about this country. Very pretty colours. I don't know if you can pick it up because of the gravel, but very nice. Look at that landscape. So barren. There's been a fire through here, making it all that more harsh. This is the spine. Over here we've got the skull. What is this desert beast that lives out here? I think people at home can guess. That's a camel. Lots of feral camels out here. So I've just climbed this uh, hill in remote Western Australia. The scenery is amazing as far as the eye can see. All around. Distances to the horizon. Very beautiful. I'm in this nice cave with a beautiful view. Good sign the reptiles are out, but I'll go pop them up. See his blue of. tongue there. Cute. It's funny how these skinks are active at um at dusk. Yeah, well, it's, it's pretty found, dark. Found a fair few like right on twilight. Anyway, we'll move him off the road. Hello. You get a shot of that? It's just jumped on me. This stick insect just flew on Stephen. Oh, there he is. Where is he? Oh, he's in the car now. Yeah, we're just trying to extract him from the car. It's amazing what wildlife you see in the desert. Dingoes. And now stick insects. Come on, buddy. I'll put him on a tree. So, Stephen. Steve howled and this dingoes came down to challenge him. So let's go see if we can find it. There he is. Where? What's yeah, that? Yep. There he is. Down. He's walking off. Well this is where he was. We only just got the eye shine in the distance, but the dingo came down to uh, challenge me. Kyle's worked extensively with dingoes. And um, sometimes when you call them back, uh, they think you're a threat to their pack. And uh, they'll come down to uh, sort you out, but as soon as they realize you're human, they run away. It's very hard to get footage of dingoes, very hard. But we're going to try and get some for you on this journey. 
just out in the... Kyle is love. Kyle is life. So just... Kyle is love. Kyle is life. I'm not doing it now, no way. Come on. Just entered the range of the northern spiny tailed gecko. Strophus ciliaris. These geckos stand out on the road pretty easily. It's really warm tonight, he's very active. He's happy there in my hand though. They come in all sorts of colours, these geckos. This one's a pretty yeah. standard colour. I'm sure we'll see more of these guys, so let's move them up the road. See how quick he is? Not usually that quick. Desert night skink. Near the South Australian border, but something worth recording. It's pretty quick. Beautiful animal. Kind of greenish underbelly. Yeah, let's have a look. You want a good photo of this guy? Yeah, got a got a mulga here crossing the road. He's a uh, really quick. Whoa! And jumpy. He's another one. We saw a roadkill of this about 120 k's away. All his subcortical scales are single, all of them. He's very active tonight. <laughs> He's super quick. I've never had a mulga dart around like this before. And you know, they're coming up with all those pygmy mulgas. Oh, he's, gonna sit. he's just a beautiful he's mulga just through. Just wait. No. <laughs> These snakes are also known as the king brown snakes. Mm. And you can tell this snake by his uh, quite large scales. Just look at that beautiful pattern. The reason why he's active is because it's a stormy night. And he's on the move. Could even be a breeding male. Oh, it's a small one. They don't get very big out here, but... Up north, they can get up to three meters, believe it or not. And get pretty thick and pretty big. No worries. These snakes actually hold quite a lot of venom for their size. Not as dangerous as a lot of other um, venomous snakes in terms of potency, but a lot of venom. Look at those beautiful scales, can't stop looking at him. I love mulga snakes. I'm just following him, see what he does. I think he's realised we're not too much of a threat now. Oh. Oops, spoke too soon. Alright, we'll leave him be, he's getting too fast. A little western brown. Gloves are a new thing for me, just good with little snakes, with little fangs. <laughs> Look at him go. Found a few western browns, I think this is the third western brown we found so far. This is a drab brown colour form. For this size, we're starting to confuse them a little bit with a uh, discoloration, I should say. We start to confuse them a little bit with a Central Ranger's Taipan. Oh, look at that! He's going, Mishu. Look at that venom. Anyway, we'll move him off the road. Off he goes. It's really, really hot and it's a little bit humid too. Fairly humid for out here, I'd say. 
all the snakes are really fast tonight. As great as it is to have all this uh, reptile activity and this amazing storm out in the desert, it's so dry out here. It's a bit worrying if one of these strikes hit the ground and some of them are very low, uh, we might be trying to outrun a fire. Uh, far more worrying than any of the snakes we're looking at. There's massive fires just to the south of here caused by lightning strikes. It's full of fires the size of a small European country, so got to be a little bit careful in these situations. Oh! Now we're heading down this little track trying to find the uh, corner of uh, the Northern Territory in WA. Just uh, signed the uh, book here, say so we've made it to the corner. Now we're on the three states part. I think this is the updated version. A bit more accurate this one, I think. Only 50 metres down the track. We're about to enter South Australia. Not that that sign will tell you so much. That was a great border pass. There's special men's business going on, so we can't get through the track. Um, and we've got to go on an even more quieter 4 b track. Um, but it's going to put us right through some beautiful mountain ranges. Um, and we're going to pop out around the Algas and around the back of Uluru. So it's going to be quite exciting. Real remote track though. So Rick, the community mechanic, has given us a uh, little uh, list of instructions here. And one of them is uh, turn right at the dead camel. So that gives you an idea of what sort of a track we're on, eh, Carl? Oh, just sorry, Goanna. But yeah, turn right <laughs> at the turn right at the dead camel. Lots of uh, funny uh, outback, you know, like a hubcap would be our little what yeah. do you call it a little guide. <laughs> but we've noticed that on these tracks that. Missing car parts are a good um, good way to give you directions. Somehow I don't think we're going to be getting an ice cream out here in the bush. So that's the sign there, Katujuda, the Algas, through to Ayers Rock. <laughs> Remote track, 255 k's, but we got plenty of uh, fuel, plenty of water, and we got a lot of spares and supplies, so we should be sweet. Unfortunately, there's been a hell of a lot of rain last night with all that thunder and lightning and we can't get through on the little X trail. It's not worth the risk. Any other car would probably do it with a bit higher clearance, but yeah. Splash up into the engine and we're really, real high. Yeah. Now I've got to turn around somehow. Yeah, so we're not going to make it through in the little X trail here. So we gotta turn around and uh, find a way back. And this is where all the lightning was. So we better, better get out of here pretty quick. So we're going to see the cave uh, where Lassiter's diary was found. Um, died trying to find a gold reef he'd found once before. So, you know, there's a big reef of gold somewhere around here, the legend has it, but who knows where. Is that gold? So this is where Lassiter stayed for uh, 25 days until he uh, walked off to find a relief party and subsequently died. Great stuff! Queensland. Fast. Yeah, stop. That's it. 
faster. Losing traction. Faster. You got it. Yes, and we are through, you beauty. Just. A nice looking skink here. Doesn't have the blunt head like a night skink. I mean, Steve, we're not out chasing skinks, but the ones in the desert are beautiful, so we can't ignore them. Look at that. That's awesome. This one's really quick. Alright, All right. Let him go. maybe him off the road. I got some really strange legless lizard here. I, th I think it's a type of Delma. Uh, probably a, some sort of Spinifex Delma or something like that. Let me have a look. Oh, that's where his tail starts, man. Yep. Right where your thumb is. Is where his tail actually starts. Yeah, that's Delma. I'm not sure. It might be Delma Tincter, or I'm not quite sure what. Uh, not Tincter. Something. It's not no. Tincter. No, it no. doesn't have the black bands. Uh, probably, yeah, some desert type of Delma. We'll be putting this up on the screen right as we speak. What it actually is, because we are super sweet at IDing things that aren't snakes. Yeah, especially a death roll legless lizard. <laughs> Look at that. Definitely are. They're actually now part of the gecko group. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Geckos have been divided up, and uh, legless lizards, pygopods, are basically uh, just another type of gecko. Just without legs, I guess. Yeah. And a long, skinny version. All right, moving my throat. And he might spring up, just stay still, because we don't want to step on him, he's so small. Let's go. Ready? Watch. Look at that. Look at this. Great technique, great defensive technique. Sorry, buddy. This way. Come on. Look at that. Now, any predator would get scared of that because it's quite threatening. It's like saying, I'm a venomous snake, but he's actually not. He's actually a lizard. Stop doing that. Who's had a scaly foot come into camp here? It's just under one of the food boxes. I'm going to take him out so we don't tread on him. Another pygopod legless lizard. Alright, well, um, we found a good tree, what appears to be a good tree for widgety grubs. The widgety bush, it's the type of acacia. And we're going to dig it up. Just down the base here, there's a bit of this uh, sawdust, which is a good indication that they're in here, as well as the tree's half dead. So, that's a good indication that right down here, there should be some widgety grubs. But they're mostly in the roots, so you gotta go right down and dig them out. The tree's gonna die anyway, because the grub eat it from the inside out. And uh, this is how you tell it's a waddle, it's got those thin leaves, very common in Australia. Well, it's actually taken us a fair bit of effort to find one, but there's one in here. Finally, we wanted to try this bush tucker for all our lives, basically. They're very soft, very wrinkly. This is a oh, bright um, yellow. I reckon he's going to taste real nice. And Steve's just going to eat him whole. It's not a strong flavour, but no, it's nice. Tastes like egg. Yeah. Like soft boiled egg. And we're looking for these grooves. See those grooves? That's where they sit. So we might get uh, maybe one or two more, but that's probably in this tree, not too much. But yes, we've finally done it. Yay! Oh no, it's one big one. Oh, nice widgety grub. Oh, very nice. It's a good little taste tester for us for the first time. And this wattle tree too, you can use the leaves as a poison or a soap for your hands. And uh, if you crush it up with water, you can actually catch fish with it by poisoning them in the waterways. So you just wanna want just some just coals. Get your ash really. Chuck it in. Just it back up a bit. Yeah, and you literally leave them in there for like a minute. Until it goes a little bit crispy basically and the inside's nice and warm. And that is ready. That was literally one minute. La 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 la. He's still very hot. Please don't do that ever again. Alright, should be good now. Alright, let's do it. Mmm!
it tastes like it. Cross between cooked egg and almond. Yeah, I thought it was very similar to almond. And uh, yeah, eggy and almond. Mm. Cool. Got a black guada here. This is the first black one we've seen on the trip. It's quite pretty. This one's very active. Squad after you got too close. If you can see, it's burnt where he's coming from in the background, and he's going around this nice green area. As green as the desert can be at, anyway. Look how he's wiggling his tail to distract you. That's a sign of agitation with with some snakes. It's like a, what, eighth guada on the trip? No shortage of these guys. He's off hunting. Looking for lizards and stuff to feed on. We're on our way to Uluru. We're just passing by the Olgas. You can see them there in the, in the background there. They look a lot bigger in real life than on camera, that's for sure. And we're back on the bitumen for the first time in a long time, eight days. Nearly a week. Nearly a week since we've been on bitumen, so. There she is, mate, Uluru. So, this is the Algas, Katujuta. And they're pretty spectacular, shutting out of the desert, just out of nowhere. Uh, out in the bush, uh, we've come across uh, a bit of bush tucker. But this is a bloodwood tree, and up here. Um, there's a bug that lives inside this uh, growth here, and apparently it tastes really, really sweet. It's like a, it's a, it's a grub, but when it, um, uh, when it develops its stage, it turns into like a little fly and they're meant to taste really sweet. So I've always wanted to try this. Here they are, so we just gotta crack these open and there should be a bug living inside this, we hope, if it's the right thing, it looks like it. Right tree and everything. Uh, we spotted the tree out before. So uh, yeah, let's go back to the car and uh, have a taste, more bush tucker. All right, so I'm just gonna crack it open and uh, have a look. Oop. All right, this may look very disgusting. Lots of flies in here. But these flies are edible and meant to taste really sweet. So I don't know how true that is, so let's have a go. And uh, the coconut's a bit older than that one when they're flies. You can eat this though. It's a very good source of protein in the bush. It tastes like eating dust, but... It's got the consistency of flary floss, but flavourless. Yeah, it's not sweet. Maybe it's the tree? Yeah, lots of moisture in there, which is good. In the survival situation, any bit of moisture helps. Yeah, coconut. Yeah, you can eat this outside husk. It is... The only problem is, all oh, the rest of that stuff's poo from the flies. So maybe, I think we're just a little bit too late, and it's a, they're both a little bit old. And this might be one of the grossest segments we've filmed. So, we've just found a toy pin also known as Oxyuranus temporalis. And now we're going to Ilru, and hopefully we might find a dingo that might steal a baby. There she is, mate. Ulru. Ilru. 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 We're gonna go look for toy pins after going to Ilru. After being in the bush for so long, it was somehow funny to us seeing a watch out for bike sign. And that's the end of part one. Coming up on part two of Cold-Blooded Cousins, we meet up with Damien Duffy, 
otherwise known as Wild Man. So stay tuned for part two.